come, come on. I see that the folks were not cut, they just shot them for nothing. The trigger had a policeman, and that Rockefeller gave word 10 minutes or so, if they don't give up, they can still have went open fire. And one black person that came out to speak to the warden, he said, you have 10 minutes to surrender. What's your reply? Are we going to come and shoot you? And the black person came out, poetic poem. This didn't happen. This didn't he said, better far from all I see to die fighting to be free. What more fitting end could be? Better surely than in some bed where in broken health I'm led, lingering until I'm dead. Better than with prayers and pleas are in the clutch of some disease, wasting slowly by degrees. Better than of heart attack are some dose of drug I lack. Let me die by being black. Better far that I should go standing here against the foe is the sweeter death to know better than the bloody stain on some highway where i'm laying torn yeah. by flying glass and pain better call in death to come than to die another dumb muted victim in the slum better than of this prison rot if there's any choice yeah. i've got kill me here on the spot Better far my fight to wage now while my blood boils with rage, lest it cool with ancient age. Better violent for us to die than to hunk on time and try, making peace just to live a lie. Better now that I say my sooth, I'm gonna die demanding truth, but I'm still a king to you. Better now than later on, now the fear of death is gone, never mind another dawn. They open the fire, yeah. but they died telling it like it was. Amen.
be with me, is the way I look at it. Right. Uh, Elijah Muhammad has said something which perhaps a lot of us white people have misunderstood. Perhaps you can explain it to me. He said that white men are devils. Yes. Well, what does he mean by that? He means just what he said. The deeds and the works of the man. He, he says the American devils. The lynching, the killing, cutting the black people's private out, sticking it in the mouth is what the dead does. Got a book called 100 Years of Lynching written by white men. Taking black women who was four months pregnant, they took us for years, and hung us up at the feet, and stuck a knife in the stomach, and ripped it, and pulled the unborn baby out just to put fear in other slaves. And they tied up black people to horses, and two horses, and pulled his arms out, and pulled his legs out. Well, lemonade trains with white children and white people of America used to come and watch them tie up 10 or 15 black men and pour gasoline on them and burn them, watch them burn alive. They took us and hung us up the trees and shot us with bullets. They took, cut a hand off and gave it to little boy and took the leg off. And this is worse than the devil. Mm-hmm. All right, but I uh, see the devil, the preacher in the church taught us that the devil was up under the ground. Right. And he awakened, he died before he burned us up. This white devil in America was worse because he burned us while we was alive. He didn't wait till we died. So what I'm trying to say is the deeds and the works. And I think this, if Elijah Muhammad can stand in America for 42 years before my little blacks ever was born and say that the American white man is the devil, then the white man should get up and say you are a lie and carry him to court and say we are not the devil. Not one American, not one government official, one mayor, one senator, none of them will stand up and say that they are not devils and this man is lying. So what am I to do? Right. I believe it. That every white man is a devil? I mean, Angelo Dundee, have a comment? Angelo Dundee's Italian. <laughs> he's, got a lot of, he's, he's got a lot of black blood in him. Harold Conrad is Jew. So no, what, what, no, no, listen, listen. What I'm saying to you is this. What I'm saying to you is this. I'm saying that Elijah Muhammad, our leader, teaches us this. And I believe everything he says. So it's not, it's not for me to prove that. Uh, you must remember, you have not lynched me. It wasn't the uh, 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 Germans that did this to us. It wasn't the white Canadians who's right on our border. He put emphasis on the American devils. He's mission to America by God to preach the truth. So what I'm saying, let's say we got one white fellow in America who has proved that he means right. Let's say we got another one. White people have died in demonstrations for black people. Now, here's the position I'm in. There's 10,000 whites coming to kill me. And in those 10,000, or let's say there's 10,000 rattlesnakes coming to bite me. And in those 10,000, there was 1,000 that didn't mean no harm. And I knew there was a good thousand snakes out there, but they all look alike. Now, what should I do? Should I keep the door open? and let the 10,000 in hoping that the 1,000 will unite and save me and one bite will kill me, or should I just be safe and shut the door? So we have white people say, I mean right. I have a black husband. All my children are black. I love everybody. I really believe you. But I'm sorry, man, there's 10 more thousand behind you that don't feel that way. I'm just sorry, but what am I gonna do? What'd you say? You appear when you're fighting. I do. Quite often. I do. Oh. I talk. Well, I... How can you repeat that? Well, some of them won't repeat. Mm-hmm. But I have a few things to say to, not for the public, but to confuse my opponent. Mm-hmm. Like I might say to a white fighter, listen, while I'm in the clinch, the Black Panther's outside. <laughs> <laughs> You don't stand a damn chance tonight, boy. Now burn your house down. He looked at this guy's crazy. <laughs> I have a lot of things I say. You never get into the ring, aging the man. No, friend. never, 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 never. Do you get in with anxiety or fear? I be, I'm nervous because of the talking that I do. I have to back it up and think about people. <laughs> I'm on a hell of a spot. I'm on a heck of a spot. Can you imagine Blue Lewis whooping me 
I'd have to. Frankly, I couldn't no. go back to America. <laughs> no, I Did you have any to... private life at all? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because all the time mm -hmm. I've seen you in Ireland, uh, up in your hotel and back and forth, people are staring at you, looking at you, wanting to touch you, wanting to talk to you. Yeah, kind of. Well, I'm, how, you know, you're a young man of 30. This seems to be to be a perpetual trot around the world that you do with people, you know. Hey. Hey, when I'm out, I rest at night, so when I'm at home, it rest, you know, like they have a saying, a prophet is never honored in his own home. Like when I leave home, I expect this, I'm new. You let me stay here one year, they get tired of me. I'm less than that. You see me every day. I'm coming like the Beatles. When they hit America, oh, it's home they were nothing. Tom Jones, when he comes to America, Tom. I mean, like, you know, when I come out, oh, when I go home, oh, I'm tired of it. <laughs> but the other day, I saw, as as I get in, the other day I saw a small boy sparring and boxing with you and so on. Do men ever try to do this? Does a man ever come up to you and say, look, uh, I'll... If he dreamed it, he better wake up and apologize. <laughs> Never no trouble out of nobody. I don't have no trouble. Man, are you a wealthy man? Yes. Be very, are you a millionaire? Two times. Are you a big spender? Do you spend yeah. a lot of money? Yeah, I'm stopping now. <laughs> yeah, I got too many cars. I got six cars, three of them Rolls Royces, which I don't need. And you know, you come up and pour and you get something, and this is, I find all of them tell me this, and you go out just to say I had it. You really don't need it. The newness wears off, you're stuck with it. You can't sell it, it appreciates. So I'm just saving money now. I have three daughters and one son, blueprints for six more children, and we want to <laughs> save all I can. So all I'm doing now, every month is saving at least 75% of my money for the future of my children, putting it away for 15 years. I don't want to touch it, I don't need it. You've said that you wouldn't uh, allow your son to become a boxer. No. Why not? Because it's rough, it's dangerous, and it's impossible for him to be as good as I am. And, uh, like, uh, I want him to use his brains. I didn't stay in school like I should. I don't have an education. I have common sense. I'm making, I don't have no education in books and writing. But uh, I want him to go to school and be a doctor, engineer, maybe a lawyer, uh, something, a judge. This where he can use his brains and while he's at youth, give him a tutor, all the teachers he needs, put up all the money for all the education, where they can rely, like for an example, if I should lose a hand, I'm finished. But a lawyer wouldn't, or a doctor wouldn't, you see, necessarily. So I want him to get his brains ready. A lot of doctors do end up broke. Are you better advised? as far as investments are concerned? Well, I'm lucky that I have these before me to take an example. And uh, uh, I've been, I have made, made it Herbert Muhammad, my manager at Wise Advisors, the son of our great lady Elijah Muhammad. And uh, most of them were just brutes, and they didn't have brains, they had people who were victim of the times, using them, and they couldn't box and handle the business too. But I found out that many friends and people, they come to you wanting to borrow money. This happens every day. 90% of my mail from all countries is loan me some money. Oh, my daughter's sick. I'm trying to go through school. I want to come to America. Oh, this and that. I found out that the best thing to do is to have somebody to send them to. Me. And he'll tell them that he can't, the budget is low. The, the other day I heard uh, Harold Conrad refer to you as the wizard that you've got a lot of wizardry in you, that you can do a lot of things, you can see into the future, that you can put a hex on people. says to God at one point, I realize it's no shame to be poor, but it's no great honor either. So what would have been so terrible if I had a small fortune? If I were a rich man, all day long, if I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to wake hard. If I were a biddy biddy rich, 
Just as noisily as they can. And each lark and would land like a trumpet on the ear, as if to say, Here lives a wealthy man. Boy. If I were a rich man, all day long, I did it, did it, bum. If I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to wake hard. If I were a biddy biddy rich, deedle deedle title title man, I'd see my wife, my golden, looking like a rich man's wife with a proper double chin, supervising meals to her heart's delight. I'd see her putting on airs and strutting like a peacock. Oy, what a happy mood she's in. <laughs> Screaming at the servants day and night. The most important men in town will come to fawn on me. They will ask me to advise them like a Solomon the Wise. If you please, the repetitive, pardon me, the repetitive, posing problems that was cross around my eyes. Yeah, be a boy, man, boy, ba ba boy, ba ba. And they won't make one bit of difference if I answer right or wrong. When you're rich, they think you really know. I'd have the time that I like to sit in the synagogue and pray. Maybe have a seat by the eastern wall, and I discuss the holy books with the learned men seven hours every day. That would be the sweetest thing of all. 